People like to say, aren't you concerned for your health? As a fat person, aren't you concerned? Yeah, I'm concerned about my health, but it has nothing to do with fat. You should be concerned about your camera quality, bro. I'm surprised the, the, the camera hasn't melted from the, the breath. Why are you so damn close to the camera? What, what, why, do, why do so many people not realize that nobody wants to see the inside folds of your face this close? By the way, no, that's a filter, okay? That is a filter. That's not real makeup, okay? There's it's the overline is serious. It's on to, it's on top of the lips that she doesn't have. But I mean, I just, I just had to point it out. I don't know why so many people put their fucking cameras so goddamn close to the screen. It, it just back it up a little bit. I get you're laying down and it's hard because gravity is like pushing down on your face. But you you need to push it back a little bit. Yeah, I'm concerned about my health, but it has nothing to do with that has things to do with the environment that I live in. Social determinants of health. It has to do with the oppression that I feel. Not having access to good medical care. Be careful when you meet people that have ways of externalizing all of their problems. It seems like if that is the case, if you can sit there and you can go and you can you can go, it's not my problem. This is happening to me. It's everything else. And don't get me wrong. Maybe there are times where it's not your fault and maybe it is systemic or maybe it is somebody else's problem that they have put upon you. Like, I'm not saying that doesn't transpire, but it's very, very easy for a lot of groups of people to just sit there and think, well, this obviously is not my problem, so therefore, if it's not my problem, it has to be somebody else's problem, but because it's not my problem, I don't have to do anything about it, because obviously, I can't. It's not my, it's not me. That's the problem. So, when I see that, I often think, like, these people think that it's really, really, like, oh, they're, it's a hard decision. It's a big, big, terrible thing that I have to acknowledge that society, the, the medical system, you know, the, the infrastructure is all designed to keep fat people down. No. Nah. That's a very easy thing to acknowledge. That's a super very easy thing to acknowledge. It's a very hard thing to acknowledge that maybe it's something that you can control. Because if it's something that you can control, then, then you have to actually understand it. You have to actually acknowledge that you have problems that need to be addressed and that you can solve those issues. That is way more difficult than acknowledging that society is holding you back in some particular type of way. So when I hear people that can easily internalize their problems, meaning like they could see what their issues are, which is being fat or even anything in general. And instead of going, I can do something about this or I can change it. They instead go, it's not my fault. It's somebody else's fault. I don't like those people. Those are all terrible people, dude. Stop doing that. Okay. It's way easier to take responsibility for yourself than it is to like throw it upon somebody else that may or may not even exist. That I feel not having access to good medical care. I, I, I don't know where this woman lives. But not having access to good medical care is such a cope because, like, if you live in a Western developed country, like, granted, it might be that you don't have the best insurance, so it's a little bit difficult to acquire certain types of, like, medical assistance or aids or things such and so forth because of the weight that you are. It, it might also be very, very difficult to get procedures done or be able to go into clinics or doctor's offices because maybe you're so fat that you can't leave your house. But even in all those scenarios... Most of those things could be alleviated by you. If it comes to talking about like not being able to leave the house, if you're so fat that you can't leave the house, it's really just your fault. If it's, if it's, I can't get this procedure done because my doctor told me that it would literally kill me if I can't get, it would literally kill me if I get this procedure done, then it's probably your fault. I don't know what to tell you than that. Like you need to, you need to actually take accountability. It's too easy for you to have these things be your problem and throw them upon everybody else. Or food. You're not bringing up sh that food is what got you in the problems you have to begin with. Not having access to good medical care or food or shelter. But you, you're good. You're good. I understand that there's a housing crisis. I understand that food is, you know, the price has gone up in the last few years. I understand that. But th the way you're looking at it is like you're just throwing out. You're just throwing out buzzwords to try to make it seem like these are bad things, right? Like food. Medical care, health system, uh, housing, right? I get it. I understand. It's 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 fine. But when are you gonna like look in the mirror and realize that you're the one, you're the issue? That affects my health. I don't. I don't disagree. I really don't disagree. Like medical malpractices, housing, where you live, all this stuff will most definitely negatively affect your health. 
But it's such a crazy thing to say that these are the things that are, are going to negatively affect your health the most when you're literally looking down the barrel of obesity, fat every single day of your life. And all of that stuff that you listed is valid. It's so valid. But it's almost irrelevant given that your main problem has to do with you being fat. That's the biggest issue there. It'd be like a guy that got run over, okay? Like he's just there, he's flattened out. Like half his body is like the tube of to the tube of toothpaste that you like squeeze that last out. It's like flat and he's laying on the road and the cop pulls up and goes, oh my God, sir, are you okay? And then the guy goes, I would have been okay if you didn't show up, you disgusting pig, you tyrannical police officer, you systematically, I bet you want to arrest me right now because my melanin capacity is 0.02, don't you? Yeah, I know you do. That'd be like, that's basically what you're doing. Like, you you got bigger things to worry about, dude. Let's, let's see if we can get your legs fixed. Let's see if we can unflatten you. Get somebody with a bike pump and just start pumping your shit up a little bit. The point I'm making is, when I hear people that have ginormous issues like this, no pun intended, I, I often see them immediately going, oh, I have these issues, but these issues right here, this is the real big issue. Nah, it's really not. Like, these are the real big issues. Do the obesity, the amount of food that you eat, the overconsumption, that's the problem, not the all of the other problems. Like, those are issues, but like nothing compared to all the other bigger ones that you have. Not my body size. Yeah, definitely not your body size. Definitely not. That affects my health, not my body size. But what about like your knees, your joints, your ankles, your walking upstairs, like any of that? That doesn't apply to you? I guess she's I guess she's looking at it like, do you just say like, fuck you to God because he gave you legs? Is that what it is? Because it, it, otherwise you wouldn't have had to deal with that. Like, how do you, how do you, if, how, because like the way I'm looking at it is if your body size is not the problem. Are you then blaming when you have problems with your joints or walking upstairs? Are you blaming it not on your body, but you're blaming it on the stairs? Then you obviously can't blame it on the stairs because they're stairs and that's not a person, right? That's not like a, a an entity. So instead of that, you have to blame it on the person that made it. But the person that made those stairs wasn't the person that like designed the stairs. So do you have to like design, you have to like diss the creator but he's not the one that is the problem. It's really the person that told the person to put the stairs there. Like, I don't know. Uh, the whole thing here just doesn't make sense. I just, again, like, it's too easy to just keep going down that line and then finally find somebody to blame, which ultimately is probably God. So it, wouldn't it just be easier to go, uh, maybe I have some issues that I can solve. You've been lied to. True. I've been lied to. And once you actually wake up from that lie... You become kind of angry. W wake up from the nightmare, not wake up from the lie. Okay, whatever, bro. Wake up from that lie. You become kind of angry. I, I see this often from dudes that are over there on like the, the red pill side or guys that have a problem getting girls or like incel men. They come to this realization where they go, they listen to a few red pill podcasts and they go like, oh yeah, women have, are hypergamous. They only going for the next guy over, you know, beta, beta, beta bucks and alpha fucks and things such and so forth. And these guys resent women. Like they all think of women as like one solid entity or like an organism of, of a person. And they get really upset. They look at these women as like terrible, disgusting, deviant creatures that prey on men and only want them for their resources or whatever the fuck. When in reality, that's not the case, right? But that tends to happen when you believe this, like, when you have, like, one way of explaining anything in life, then you're going to continuously go back to that thing, even if it doesn't make sense. So, like, for instance, in this scenario, if you're going, oh, it's not my body size that's the problem, it's all these other things, like, I understand that you have to go there because that's, like, where you've drawn all your logic from. Like, that's, that is fundamentally where you get your entire idea of how to navigate the world. So, like, obviously, this is a thing that needs to, like, supply you with the evidence and the moral foundation and, like, how you live your life and stuff like that. So, you always have to go there. I understand it. Like, that's the well. But some people overdraw the well because sometimes... You can't explain everything through the realm of just one thing, right? If you're going, oh, um, tell me why you didn't get that job. Because women, you know, the, the boss there was a woman and naturally women don't like men. And it's not because my resume was poorly made. It was because 
she was a woman and women don't like me and women are obviously terrible disgusting people right like I would rather be hired by like an oyster than a woman I'd rather work for a clam than a woman women are gross then it's like dude you have a problem it's probably your resume right it's probably other things probably not the fact that she's a woman it could just be that you suck right like if you have a uh, if you have a tendency of just going to the same well over and over again the way I like to look at it is like you should have multiple places to draw from. So it shouldn't just be one thing. It should be like multiple places, like toolboxes, that when you have a problem, you can go to each individual toolbox, metaphorically speaking, like this is in your mind, and you can easily pull out the tools you need in order to solve that problem. And if you find that you don't have a toolbox for that particular problem, that's all right, because you can, you can now adopt that different toolbox. You understand? That one toolbox that you have that you think is going to be able to fix all your problems. Nah, sometimes you need to update. Sometimes you need to get different toolboxes. Sometimes you need different tools in those toolboxes. You understand? Like it's a learning process and that's okay to adopt new things. Why would they lie to us about this? Capitalism. Oh, oh, capitalism. The worst, the bane of our existence. The reason why you're even fat to begin with. The, the, the whole idea of why you're fat is because you're you're in a capitalist country. I mean, you don't see many overweight people in communist or socialist uh, countries. You don't see that very often. I mean, maybe in the ones that work, but, you know, where's that? It's too easy, too easy for these people to just go to capitalism bad. Therefore, not a problem. And this person's never going to have to worry about it, by the way. Like, they could just continuously living in a capitalistic country and never have to worry about the problems of saying capitalism is bad because we allow it. It's completely fine. It's like, it's like perfectly fine. It's like, the most American thing to do in America is say you don't like America. That's it's really like the best because there's no other country in the world that allows us to say the things that we're saying in other than America. I mean, there are some other countries too, don't get me wrong, but you know, you understand the point I'm making. When you just say the reason why our lives suck is capitalism, you are thinking about the world in a very, very black and white way. And you can you can totally do that, but everything carries nuance and everything is going to need a little bit more wiggle room than that. Like you can't just explain everything away just based off of this or that. That's crazy. That's not how that is. Oftentimes there is a gray area and it depends on where it is. You understand? So if you're just like going capitalism is the problem, you're dumb. I, there's nothing to say than that. They're making money off of you. Everybody is making money off of everybody, dude. Okay. Like you hire somebody and you employ them, but guess what? The ultimate goal of hiring that individual is making money off of that person. There's supposed to be a net positive on your, whatever. Plain and simple. What's, this was my thing is, so who's like gonna saying. represent the fat women if nobody's fat mm -hmm. and proud to be fat? Absolutely. Like what's gonna happen to this movement? What's gonna happen to the little girls that are coming up that we fought so hard to have that representation for why do we need the little girls to be fat to begin with? Isn't it better to just for the, for them to be of healthy weight instead of being fat? I mean, I get it. If you're saying like, oh, what's going to happen to the little girls that are already fat, that are growing up fat to begin with, they are going to need representation because they are already fat. We're not going to want to change them or whatever. It's not a good thing to have kids that are obese, right? It's just not. Like the other day I was downtown, I was walking around and there was a family, it was a beautiful family, great family, but I noticed that one of their kids was horrendously obese, like crazy obese. And one of the, all the other kids were playing in the park, right? And um, the father, the mother, they were watching the kids or whatever. And the little, the little girl was just chilling with the mom and dad, just on the fucking sidewalk, just chilling. And I'm just saying, like, you have three other kids, and they're all playing, right? They're all of good weight that they can play. And this little girl who's probably, like, I don't know, 50 pounds over can't do anything because it's just not possible for her. It's really, really tough. And I've seen this phenomena all the time, dude. When I was growing up and I was in elementary school and we did have recess, the fat kids never did shit. They would be, they would be like, immovable objects. They would literally just sit there underneath the, underneath the, 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 the slide and... And you would go over there and be like, hey, Jose, what's going on? Yeah, dog, what's going on, man? Like, I'm just here chilling, dog. You know how it is, man. Like, that's what they would do. That's that, that was their whole life was sitting underneath the slide and hoping somebody came over there and talked to them because they couldn't actually do anything else, which is really sad. You're setting your kids up for failure. It's not a flex to have a fat kid. I don't care what anybody says, okay? Take care of your children. But I understand, like, if you think that if you're already priorly fat that you need representation as a fat child. Like, I get that. But overall, that shouldn't exist. That's not a good thing. So 
you should be trying to mitigate that as much as possible. But I mean, representation, right? I guess. When they're looking around and everybody's got a BBL and everybody's skinny. That's a crazy ass thing to say. So the little girls growing up that are fat, that are looking at BBL'd women that are skinny. I mean, you just keep it a buck with them and say, that's not a real body type. That's not something that we should strive for. If you want a BBL when you're like, I don't know, like when you're above age, then that's fine. If that's what you want to do, I, guess. I don't know. Like, what are you talking about? What does this have to do with representation of fat women? What is it? BBLs? What does BBLs have to do with anything? There's no one out here representing fat. And I just, hi, I'm fat and I'm just going to be fat because I love. Yeah, it's, it's tough too. If you say these words too, like, hi, I'm fat and I'm representing fat. You're going to, you're going to put yourself in a box. And then when you do that. And then you ever do decide to lose weight. Uh, let's just say, for instance, Lizzo is a really good example of that. Because, like, as you know, Lizzo was a very, very voluptuous woman. And she made songs about it, you know. And um, she represented for it. She, was on, she went on stage multiple times and said, like, I am the spokesperson for being fat. Like, I should. I am the person. I'm that guy. And then she started to lose weight. And what happened, dude? Her fan base turned on her. People started talking shit to her. I love that she decided to lose weight. But let's be honest here for a second. When you put yourself in a box like that, it becomes very difficult to get out of that box. That's why I think it's always like really, really important to preference everything that you say because it's really, really difficult sometimes to say something and then later on that thing gets proven, dis proven to be wrong and then now you're stuck there because you said that this is going to be you. Like in this scenario, um, if she ever wanted to lose weight, people are going to look back at this video and go, huh, oh yeah? Oh, yeah, fat queen? Well, what about that time you said that you were going to not lose weight and now you lost weight? What the fuck is that? You understand? Like, it's a problem now. So, don't do that. Always try to preference stuff and always try to give, like, caveats to things. So, like, for instance, I know and you know that we live in a capitalistic society. And I love capitalism. I think it's great. You know, you get money, you use the money for things, and that's so on and so forth, right? Free market. But if there was something better than capitalism, I would choose that. And I always say that. That's like a really good example. So if somebody said, David, are you for or against capitalism? I would say, yep, I'm for capitalism. I love capitalism. I think capitalism is like the most fair um, economic structure that we have. But if there was something better than capitalism, I would choose that. That's what I would say. That's what I would say. That's what I would say. Because that then tells you that my, my stance is I do enjoy capitalism. And then it also tells you that I'm not like solely stuck within the capitalism environment. I'm okay with moving to a different thing if it was better. That's the way you should say it here. You should say, we need more fat representation, but on the off chance, if I ever do lose weight, I don't like, you know, there should always be something that, so it doesn't tie you down or anchor you to that shit. You know what I mean? No, I just absolutely. couldn't see myself in a skinny body. And I mean, I'm just really passionate about being who I am Absolutely. and but you know that if you're you're not just a fat person though like th these people I swear have some of the most identity problems I've ever heard in my life dude you're not just a fat person though you're a person underneath all of that you're an individual at the end of the day I understand it's very convenient to like identify with a particular group or a mentality because it is easy to do that it is very easy for people to instead of saying I am your name it's very, it's very much easier to say, I am a black woman. I am a fat woman. I am a black guy. It's very easy to say those things, but they're not really you, are they? They're just words that you're, you're basically just identifying as like a, a stormtrooper. Basically you're, you're not whatever your name is. You're your stormtrooper number 44. You know what I'm saying? You're just a part of the big, the big cogs that are turning the machine. Right. And it's fine if you want to identify in groups when it's convenient to. Like, you know, I'm a Yu-Gi-Oh player, but I'm also David. Like, I'm David first, right? And a lot of people I know like to identify as like black or women or all this other stuff or like maybe even your career, right? But your name, right? You as an individual should always be the first thing. It should always be the first. And then uh, as you go along, eventually you hit woman, guy, black man, whatever, right? Like those things can come up eventually. But first and foremost should always be you um forget about being fat none of that shit really fucking matters and when people say like i'm a fat woman i'm this i'm that what the fuck is your name why the fuck is it so easy for you to go i am a black or i am a fat like come on and i mean i'm just really passionate about being who i am Absolutely. and you know representing that
every day on this app there's more skinny girl does nothing fat people you're horrible that's facts yeah that's true or people who just cannot think critically this is a comment that was posted on a video that i made like two years ago about i have a i have a really big problem when people choose to like hook on to one comment that they got on a video from two years ago or just a random comment like marissa does this a lot in her videos um it's too easy for people to just look at one comment and that's not really re reflective of anyone else. It's super easy. It's like the most easy comment to hook onto and dismantle it. And they do. And they think it's a win. It's not a win. You know what I'm talking about? It's basically like taking candy from a baby. Like why it's, if it's that easy, you shouldn't be doing it. That girl who was like eating mouthfuls of sprinkles. And I just said, imagine if a fat person did this and what the comment section would look like. And I get comments like this all the time. And I'm like, no, 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 no. You, you have missed the point, the point over your head through your ears around the corner the point of this video the point of this video is a thin person she's talking about okay so context there's a girl in a video that was eating a ton of of jimmies which is fine uh, i wouldn't fucking do it it sounds disgusting i don't know if you guys have ever eaten a lot of jimmies all in one session it's gross it's it's just sugar you're literally just eating sugar after like the first three bites it doesn't even have a flavor anymore. You're just putting random assortments of sugar in your face, which is like disgusting, but you know, whatever you want to do, right? The point she's making is that if you're thin, you have way, 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 way more slack compared to a fat person. Like fat people can do this and they will get tons of hate. Tons of people will look at them and go like, oh my God, this person is already super ridiculously morbid obese. I can't believe that they're eating this. But if a thin person does it, it's like, oh, it's okay. Like, she's not eating like this all the time, which is probably true. Which is probably true. Don't get me wrong. I've met plenty of women and people in general that are of good normal sizes that eat, like, one hot pocket a day and, like, a bag of Funyuns. I get it. But most of the time, if you're at that weight, you're probably okay. You can probably eat some Jimmy's every once in a while. I mean, I wouldn't fucking recommend it regardless, but that's probably her point. I haven't watched this video I haven't pre-watched these videos. I don't pre-watch any very many of the videos. So I'm guessing that's what she's gonna say though. Just because I've been in this environment, just because I probably I mean just when I hear like any of these people say one or two sentences, I can pretty much like gather exactly where their political beliefs are, uh, the way they think about things and how their how their brain works most Through of the time. Through your ears, around the corner. The point of this video was to say exactly what you said, but opposite. That when a skinny girl does, quote unquote, nothing, fat people are upset, right? That's what you're saying. But when a fat person does nothing, like eats, exists, shows their outfit of the day, does everything thin people do on this app every day, then there's a bunch of thin people who are like, you're disgusting, you're horrible, lose some weight. Because you got to look at it within the context at which you're placing this stuff. Like you yourself are not, you're not normal, okay? Can we agree on that? Like it's not normal. The, it, it, it's very, very easy to say, like, why is it so easy for thinner people to make videos like this and they get no pushback? But when I do it, it's different. People have a problem with it because you're not the same as those thin people. You're in a different body type. It's not going to be equal, dude. You're different to them. You're going through different problems. So, like, it would be like saying, oh, when I... I drive my 18 wheeler through that bridge, right? You have no problem. Like you can drive through your bridge and it's really fucking crazy that you can just do that. And nobody has a problem with it. But when I do, the top of my truck gets cut off because I guess the bridge is too small. I can't believe that you have no problem doing that. It's really unfair. And then you're looking at a Prius. Yeah, fucking duh. You're an 18 wheeler. You're an Optimus Prime. Like you can't expect to be treated the same when you are not the same. You're not the same. You're different. You have you're going to have different standards and regulations and things that are going to happen. Now, granted, I think everybody should be treated equal, but you can't expect that on the internet, like especially in the eyes of like public opinion, people are going to look at you different. People are going to say things that are different. But you know what, dude? I mean, it's very easy for these people to make. This is such a gaslighting argument too, because like anybody that is, it's especially somebody that's saying critically think, it's really insane to try to compare yourself, a fat person to a thinner person and then complain that when that person does something, i.e. eating or wearing clothes, fit checks or whatever, compared to a fat person doing those things and try to say those two things are the same, it's really interesting that you would say critical thing. Today, then there's a bunch of thin people who are like, you're disgusting, you're horrible, lose some weight. Have ever heard of Ozempic? All these different things. 
So the cognitive dissonance is real. That's crazy, bro. That's crazy, dude. The cognitive dissonance. You're literally displaying the cognitive dissonance. You're purposely being ignorant to. Can we talk about that for a second? What the fuck do you mean? If you don't understand what cognitive dissonance is, cognitive dissonance is when you have two thoughts and the one thought doesn't align with the other thought. So like, for instance, you think women are cool people, right? Women should have the right to vote. Women should have the right to, you know, freedom of speech, all this stuff. But on the other hand, you think women are terrible and they should be at home and they should cook and they should clean all this stuff. How the fuck are you going to believe both of those things simultaneously? There's conflict between those things. That's cognitive dissonance. You should probably be working on that because if your thoughts are are not cohesive and they're not parallel, you're gonna run into problems when you have arguments or have conversations with people because eventually that's just gonna tease out and you're gonna be caught because that's an issue. You need to we need to unweave those things so that way they work together. You understand? So cognitive dissonance here is two people that are different expecting the same result. It's not how that works. As like saying, I played this video game on normal difficulty and I had a relatively okay time. It was fun. And then going, I played that same video game on extra veteran difficulty and I was also doing it with my hand tied by my back. I don't know why I didn't have the same result as that person that played it on normal, but you never mentioned that you played the game on fucking hardened veteran omega level difficulty. You understand? Like you're not mentioning that part. It's obvious you're living a different life. And I, I, I and you're sitting here claiming, Oh, the cognitive dissonance, the lack of logic, the lack of critical thinking skills. Get, what are you talking about? You're literally that. You're literally all of those things. Ever heard of Ozempic? All these different things. So the cognitive dissonance is real. That's their, that's an appeal to authority, which is a logical fallacy. My inability to relate to having a metabolic condition has nothing to do with scientific arguments or explanation. Do your followers a favor and don't spread pseudoscience regarding wellness. You are not doing them. You are not doing them far. You are doing, you are doing them far more harm than good. I see a lot of people that say things like this and it's so dumb like they'll try to gaslight or they'll try to put out like a false uh or like a scarecrow what's that shit called i don't know but they'll pull out this like thing I i've heard before you're a man therefore you don't know what i'm talking about when it comes to woman issues and i always think like that's fucking stupid like we're not even really talking about woman issues like we're talking about you know what i'm saying like it's such a dumb thing to say like oh do you think women should be enlisted in the military and you go uh yeah i think probably women should be enlisted in the military because like if we want like an, an if we want like equality between the sexes i think that's probably a, a good measure and then they go well you don't you you shouldn't be really having these opinions since like you're a man and being a man is going to in fear on your ability to have a logical argument not nah, it's like it's dumb it's a stupid argument it's a stupid way of like trying to reason it out um people can have the ability to critically think and it has nothing to do with them being fat or their gender or anything else they may not have the experience but even on those particular fronts you may not even know that right like a lot of people claim um that white people can't have experiences with racism which is dumb because of course they can um and a lot of people would say well you've never experienced this type of racism therefore you can't have an opinion on it that's it's like it just depends on the racism it just depends on what you're talking about it depends on like how you're 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 dishing that out it just depends and just in like negating an entire community off the basis of because you think that they couldn't be exhibited to that is dumb because don't you want more people talking about this I just hate it when people have these types of arguments. I don't know about anyone else, but I have seen doctors and Eastern medicine specialists, and I only have been told to eat lettuce. Yeah, no, I'm going to keep it a bug that no way. Eastern doctors, by the way, when they say Eastern doctors, they're talking about like <laughs> people over there in like, I guess, Asia, I guess, like Eastern as in like Eastern Europe, maybe. I don't know. Like usually when they say Eastern, they're talking about Eastern western as in like america or countries that are westernized and easternized countries that are like i guess older countries or like it, it's not it's not a very specific thing a rant because i saw that apparently my state's government wants to ban chocolate and strawberry milk from school here's the thing if you want kids to drink milk and put your you put flavored syrup in it if you want them to eat their veggies you cover them in ranch oatmeal you put brown sugar in it, trail mix, M&Ms, 
fruit whipped cream something fun and yummy mixed mixed with boring food they need it's harmless genuinely we need sugar and carbs and fats i just think that so, like the milks milks at school in my opinion have never been good i don't know why so many schools are incentivized people to drink these milks like i get it it's calories i suppose it's just I know that a while ago people used to say it was the calcium, but that didn't really mean anything because, like, what are you do? What are you talking about, dude? Nobody's like, really even calcium deficiency. It, it, I don't even think that milk even gives a sufficient amount of calcium. I don't think it does at all. And I'm pretty sure that the reason why milk is even a thing, it's, it's just like why are school buses yellow? Because we've just been doing it for so long that we just keep doing it, basically. Or it's subsidized. A lot of these companies are being uh, – pu public schools are – paying these particular companies or these companies are paying vice versa or whatever to get these milks to be the number one thing that the, the kids drink and stuff like that which is really terrible because milks expire dude you know how many times i've been in school uh and i knew somebody or even me popped open a milk and that shit was chunked up i even knew a dude that body slammed a whole chunky milk like i literally remember seeing this dude he went up to the front he was like yo bro before we go up to the front real quick let me get this milk right pop the milk open it up, took a big ass swig because you know, when you're thirsty, sometimes you'll just take a big giant gulp back just to get the liquid in your mouth, right? He chugged it back real quick and he was about to take that second, but I guess the flavor hit his mouth, right? And it was chunky. It was really, really chunky and, and just dirty in his mouth. And he was like, Oh man, that shit is good. Hold up. Actually, I don't know if that was bad or not. So he took another big ass swig, right? Body slammed it. It was dust. And he's like, yeah, that shit was expired. And he cleaned the whole thing. Like the entire milk was cleaned out. He drank that entire thing. And for the rest of the day, he had bubble gut all day. It was completely, he was farting. He was going to the bathroom. That shit was crazy. Um, Probably would be better for just regular water. And if you want to make the, the case of, First of all, water doesn't expire to the same degree that milk would. And then also, if you want to go, well, you know, like you said, like you need some flavoring in it. That's fine, too. You can have flavoring in the water if that's what you want, like some strawberry water. Strawberry water sounds gross. But, you know, what I'm talking about like some fruity water or whatever you want to do. I personally would probably agree with that more than milk. I don't even I, don't, I have no idea why we even do still do milk. But if you know something I don't, please let me know. You know what we don't do? Tell their tell their their chill. Sorry. Tell kids that their chocolate milk will make them fat and unhealthy, which is true, by the way. It's just useless calories. I don't think that it's I don't think it's ever a good idea to drink calories. I, I eat cereal very sparingly, maybe like once or twice a month. And I do it with milk because I'm not crazy. I'm not going to do it with water like some people I know. But um, it's true. Uh, it's not that the milk itself will make you fat. It's just the overconsumption of certain types of foods and doing that consistently, which will make you healthy. It'd be better to say that instead of milk in general making you unhealthy. You don't say that ranch is fattening. Says who? Uh, do you know somebody that doesn't say that, dude? Yeah, ranch is like one of the most calorie-dense condiments on the fucking planet. What are you talking about? What are you? Uh, that's a crazy-ass point. So the only thing that makes broccoli bearable is, to to them is forbidden or else they become fat. So are you talking about, like, I guess the ranch is what you're putting on broccoli? I've never heard that. Broccoli is pretty good default, like without anything on it. Broccoli is really good, actually. I really like broccoli. So anyway, I don't know about that. They don't get the treats that make food enjoyable and fun because otherwise they become fat and ugly, gross and unhealthy. Damn, that's a really fucking terrible way of thinking about it. Show them supersize me and say, see, this is what happens when you eat the burger. R.I.P. to the guy that uh, was the the main guy in Super Size Me. He did pass away at, at 50, 53, I believe. Really sad. You became the butt of a fat joke. Undesirable. And no child of mine will fall in the obesity crisis uh, single-handedly ruining America. Well, you know, it is definitely doing that. And being fat is not good. It is not a good trait to have. So I'm going to have to agree with that. You don't want fat kids because if you have fat kids, odds are that kid's going to be fat for the rest of their lives. So you don't want that. You don't want to bestow upon your child a default trait of just a negative passive ability. 
You people are killing youth. That's crazy, bro. So you're saying like we should get rid. So you're saying getting rid of the chocolate and strawberry milk, which by the way, we never had strawberry milk. I never had that shit. We did have some chocolate milk, but most of the time we just had regular standard milk, which was gross, but we had that, you know? Um, you're saying getting rid of that is a bad thing. Are they, what are they replacing it with? It might just be one of those things where it's like, oh, um, even though fat people at a, fat people are at a higher likelihood of getting heart disease or having heart attacks, their chances of rebounding from those particular heart attacks are increased, which is true. But you also take away the fact that the people that are having heart attacks that are fat are like 20 and the people that are having normal heart attacks are in their 60s, 70s, and 80s, right? So it's like you're you're just leaving out key <laughs> – you're leaving out key information and you're making it seem like, oh, it's the fat people that are actually – even though they're having these heart diseases, it doesn't really matter because they can just come back from it. No, that's not true. Um, or flavored milk and cosmic brownies. Cosmic brownies, by the way, are very high in calorie. Don't fuck with that shit. You people are killing the youth. Figuratively and uh, literally, not fast food, not flavored milk, or cosmic brownies in their lunches. You are giving kids bad relationships with foods, unhealthy and toxic views on weight, body image, or full-on eating disorders before they are even hit fucking puberty. It's not a good idea to have an obese kid before puberty. And by the way, um, telling your kid or training your kid that the only way you can eat certain foods is if you coat them with things that taste better or things that are like covered in sugar or things that are like ranch on broccoli, dude. Like, what are you talking about, man? You can't, if you can't just eat a piece of broccoli default because you've trained your child or yourself that the only way you can eat this is if you coat it with something that's going to make it more delectable. That's a problem. That's a real big issue, dude. That's not a good thing. So even this argument doesn't make any sense. So like, <laughs> uh, no, that's a terrible thing. It's, it's a poor, if you want to look at it like that, it's a poor relationship with food on either way. But at least on the other side, you're getting a good sources of good foods right and and you're training people to understand that it's not good to be fat it's not a good idea to have over over consumption of food and uh it's probably way better on the side that's what happened to me i remember being eight years old and thinking how much better i liked myself when i was laying down because i could pretend my stomach was flat that way that's crazy dude okay i had dreams where i was skinny and woke up hoping it became true so like when you're eight years old and you're dreaming about being skinny this just falls to the parent because when you're that old you can't there's no way you can like understand from a baseline what even is obesity or being fat like it's really up to the parents dude and it sucks so much because so many parents neglect that very particular part which is dieting dieting is like very 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 important okay like you're sitting here. If like I hear parents a lot telling like, "Oh, you're fat. You're fat. You got to get on a diet." And it's like, "Well, this kid's eight years old. Like, what? What even? What value are you giving to this kid by saying you're fat? What even is that? Like, what are you telling that kid, bro? They can't even understand how to make their bed properly. And you think they're gonna like understand the deep intricacies of being fat? That's crazy. That's dumb. That doesn't make any sense at all. Anyway." I woke up, became true. The 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 two times I ever lost more than five pounds when I was when I was bedridden with swine flu, and I was only allowing myself water and fruit most days. And when I was doing it on purpose, starving myself, I had never felt better around, about my body. Control like a lot of people will do this. Will have bad experiences with eating because they did something drastic and i see this a lot where they go i only lost weight when i was doing something crazy so i'm never gonna do that again well why like you you did something crazy and lost weight but you could have done something else sustainable and still lost that weight and it, it would have been the equal amount of progress it might have taken a little bit more time but it still would have been the progress regardless so people get dissuaded because they did something extreme to lose the weight and they never do it again which is really sad because it's not the way you're supposed to do it. Like you're supposed, it's supposed to be sustainable. Anyway, um, water, starving myself to feel better. Controlling your children's food, being their diet buddy. We called them that. We called them Anna buddies and slightly different communities. Telling them how how much more attractive they'd be if they were skinnier. I don't know about that, dude. We shouldn't be telling anybody about being attractive at eight years old. It's kind of crazy. Expecting. 
how good they look every time they lose weight, not letting them eat harmless snacks. Their friends share with them at lunch. No kid is sharing snacks at lunch. That's crazy, bro. You are killing. That's not true. This is not true. None of this is true. This is all a facade. This is all a grand illusion to try to uh, get past the underlying issue, which is that you just don't like real foods. And all of this shit is like, it, it, none of this is actually good points. You're just basically um, gaslighting or you're trying to fit, you're trying to find a reason to keep these snacks in. I, I don't even understand what, what, what even points are. Like you're literally saying that you thought you wished you, you were thinner, but I guess your parents were not a well-equipped parents enough to give you that particular type of privilege. None of this makes sense. All right, guys, that's the end of the video. So if you enjoyed today's video, I'd appreciate if everybody could leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video, all those things I'd appreciate tremendously. So if you could do any of this stuff for me, I would appreciate you tremendously. Um, by the way, you're a beautiful person. If you want to hit that membership button, you can. If you don't want to, that's fine too. We do live streams on the channel, by the way. If you want to come in and join up every, not every day, sorry. Uh, every day from the time of about Wednesday to Sunday, I'm live streaming pretty much. And that's about 6 p.m. EST. So if you want to pop in and join up and talk about your feelings or whatever you want to talk about, that's cool. Um, like, comment, subscribe would help me grow in the algorithm. So if you could do that stuff, I'd appreciate it tremendously. If you watch the video in its entirety, leave it down below by typing in cards. Cards. I don't. Do you guys play this? Phase 10, I think. Um, I'm going to play this tonight. And it's going to be fun. But cards. Leave it down below. Playing cards or whatever cards you have. Because I acknowledge your cards. And by the way, your cards are so beautiful, so delicate, so put together, so amazing. That face card is definitely beautiful. Through the roof, by the way. Skincare on fleek. Skincare on 10. Skincare on beautiful. Hashtag edges. Hashtag slay queen. Hashtag you got it. Anyway, um, if you want to check out my social media, it'll be linked down below in the description. It's just my instagram twitter discord if you want to check out any of that stuff it'll be in the description all you have to do is click about and you can find it in the channel or this video enjoy the rest of your day guys 